Hello and welcome to Neat Video. In this tutorial we're going to show you how to use the Neat Video plugin. Now what I have in my project, this is Adobe After Effects, is in my project panel the sample clip that I showed you how to download in the previous tutorial. The only other thing I've done is I have also installed the Neat Video plugin as I showed you before and in my effects menu item up here you'll see I now have a tab Neat Video which is greyed out at the moment because I haven't got any layers selected. Now in your application you will have your own way of applying effects and in your effects controls you will find the Neat Video tab and how you apply your clip to your timeline so that you can edit it and how you apply the effects will be different to how I apply them in After Effects but once that's happened you'll find that the operation of Neat Video is going to be pretty much the same regardless of whichever application you're using. Now for me in After Effects the first thing I need to do is have a quick look at my clip so if I click it once I get some information up here. I'm told that it's a sample clip and it is 640 by 480 and 29.97 frames per second and now I need to create a composition that is exactly the same size and length as this clip. In After Effects that's very simple I can click and drag the clip and drop it in the new comp icon and that will create a new composition which is exactly the same length, size and frame rate as the original. If you don't have that option you simply need to know what the size of the video is create a composition or a sequence exactly the same size and then drop the video into that. Okay, now I have the video in, I select the clip itself, so select the layer and I can apply the effect. Now you will need to select your clip in your timeline and also go to however you apply your effects, go to the effect, find where it says neat video and then apply it. For me that simply means clicking. Now neat video is applied to my clip you will see that it hasn't made any difference to the clip as yet because we need to provide Neat Video with some information so that it knows what is noise and what is not noise so that it can get rid of whatever noise it finds. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the clip. I'm hitting my spacebar to play and you'll see that it's full of lots of random noise. You can see it over here and in the sky and in the foliage and on the road. All over this is a very, very noisy clip. So we need Neat Video to help us to get rid of it. Now, when we have applied reduced noise, there are some controls in the effects control panel that you might be tempted to play with, but at the moment they are not going to help. What you need to be looking for is some hot text at the top with this word options. And when you click on the word options, it's going to open up a quick dialog, which tells us that this is a free demo version. It tells us how to use it, so we've got access to a quick start guide, and also, of course, we can purchase Neat Video online which I hope you'll do after this tutorial. But I just want you to click OK for the moment and this opens up the Neat Video window. Now this has brought in one frame of the clip that we have. I'm just going to shut it down for a moment. It's very important to analyse the footage that you're going to use. This particular clip has been locked off on a tripod so it's not changing much. So even as I move through time I can see that the sky isn't changing and is staying in exactly the same place. But you might have a clip that pans or zooms and you're going to find areas of the video that have got more or less details. And what you're looking for is a frame in your video that has got plenty of area in it with no real details. So what we have here is the sky which has got no real details in it. There are no particularly fluffy clouds. It's just a blue sky and you can clearly see all the noise defined in this area with no details. Now this is important. Neat Video needs an area without details in it because it's going to look at the noise in this area and it's going to say this is all noise. Now if I was to include accidentally let's say these lamp posts in my analysis, Neat Video is going to turn around and say ah okay so noise looks like all of this including these lamp posts and then it's going to go through the whole video clip and remove anything that looks vaguely like these lamp posts and so the whole clip is going to look bizarre. So it's important to find a frame or a field which has got an area with nothing really but noise and use that for defining what noise looks like. Now thankfully Neat Video is very good at helping us find it. It doesn't always get it right so we need to always be looking at our video and the first thing we need to do is find an appropriate frame but once we've found that frame we can then click on that options box click OK and then 
under the device noise profile we click on this little button here which says auto profile click on that and neat video says oh as far as i can see this is an area with no defining features except noise and i'm going to select that is it okay we say yes that's okay we don't need to worry about any of these buttons at the moment we'll deal with those in future tutorials all we need to do is look actually over here at quality and as we look at quality we can see that neat video says I'm 83% certain that this is an area without any defining features except noise and I'll tell you if this is anywhere above 60 you've done very well however don't worry and don't get too upset about this quality the important thing is to find an area where you know there is nothing but noise and when you know you've got a good area that's well covered with just noise then if the figure isn't too high don't worry too much move on to the next stage and see how you do now for the next stage we really want to preview this frame and see how it looks and we can find a preview under this second tab noise filter settings click on the noise filter settings and you'll see immediately it says filtered and we can see that there's a great deal of noise that's disappeared from the sky and from the road and apparently from the foliage and if you click on the frame itself it's going to show you the original let go filtered and you can click on the word preview as well to toggle between the two filtered original so we can see that this actually looks very good we've already got rid of an awful lot of noise this is looking superb we do have some additional tabs to the right here for additional filtering so that we can boost the effect of these filters and these are the default settings and for now I think we're going to leave them as they are effectively what neat video has done is it has taken the RGB the red green blue video input and changed it to another working space one that includes luminance and chrominance so brightness and color now the human eye is a lot more sensitive to luminance or brightness and darkness than it is to chrominance or color and so what neat video has said is let's take out all the noise from the chrominance area from the color area but let's not take out 100% from the luminance because if we do it can start to look a bit funny and in fact if you do move this all the way up to 100% it can over smooth your video and it can begin to look a little bit plasticky around the edges and we found at neat video that actually the default setting of 60% generally works very well but if you feel you need to boost it you can do at the bottom you also have sharpening sharpening is an option if you want to use it by all means go ahead um, however a little word of warning I have always found with sharpening sharpen it until it looks great and then dial it back a bit because it's very easy to overdo right so are we happy let's have a quick look filtered original filtered yep we're happy with that the last thing we then need to do is click apply click apply and it says here this demo edition of neat video has the following limitations it will only process 30 minutes of video data it will filter up to 640 by 480 pixels in each frame and it will put a neat video demo label in each filtered frame so this is a demo version it's got limitations however if you were to buy the home version or the pro version these restrictions disappear and you can use much much larger frame sizes the home edition will go up to DVD size the pro edition is unlimited frame size and both of them will have unlimited length of video and you will not have any labels so we'll just click OK for now and it applies it to the clip and there you are we can see at the bottom we've got the label that was put on there and it looks great however let's just do a little preview and see how it looks on After Effects I do a RAM preview by hitting the zero key on my numpad so let's have a little look at it and there we go we can see that actually the noise is far less in the sky and on the road um, however you know what I can still see some noise in the trees in the foliage so what can we do about that well the first thing we could do is we could go back to our options box click OK and we could start to move around the noise filter sections and seeing if we move up luminance perhaps to 70 or 75 and then preview that and reapply it however for this particular example I'm going to show you one other way of doing it and this is when these controls over here come along now I'll explain them briefly from the bottom adaptive filtration what that's saying is if your noise profile changes over the whole length of your video clip neat video is clever enough to be able to take its complex algorithm 
and apply it in this different way to the different parts of the clip. So you can click adaptive filtration, but if the clip is essentially the same all the way through, you don't really want to clip on that. The temporal filter threshold is actually a slider and it looks at the movement inside of your video. Now, if you have lots of fast movement and you're worried that the filtering is going to affect that, then you reduce it. However, if there is not a lot of fast movement and you want to increase the effect of the filter, then you can increase that. It's basically how sensitive it is to fast movement. But the one that we want to use is this one at the top, temporal filter radius. And at the moment it's set to one. And what that is saying is, let's look at the frame before, the frame that we're on at the moment, and the next frame to see what is noise that's just flashing on and off and what is a real feature such as the leaves of the trees or the lamp posts or the cars so it's looking at the frame before the actual frame and the frame after and determining what is noise and what is real items real bits that should be there now we can increase this from one let's choose three now let's do a RAM preview by hitting zero on my numpad we have a little look and we can see already that there is a significant reduction in the noise in the foliage and trees. And in actual fact, we can dial that all the way up to maximum 5, do a RAM preview, and you can see that the noise is all but gone. Now do bear in mind that if you increase this temporal filter radius, it is going to increase the render time proportionally. And in fact, the speed of render is going to be proportional to the frame size. So at the moment we've got the demo version, we have a small frame. If you've got a very large frame, then obviously it's going to take longer to actually do the filtering. Now let me just show you the difference that this has made. If I hit stop, I'm going to turn it off by just hitting the FX button up here in the effects control button. And this is the original footage. Very, very noisy footage. Some people would just reject this footage and say we can't use that. It's just not suitable for the work that we need to do. However, if I hit the FX button and do another quick RAM preview, you can see that the footage that other people might have rejected is now completely usable and beautiful looking with all the noise dealt with. One last thing for After Effects. If you have got a large frame and you have turned up your temporal filter radius to the maximum and you're finding that it's slowing down your work, what you can do is pre-render this layer. So you can click on the layer and you go to Composition pre-render and that adds it to the render queue and then we need to choose a lossless codec so that we can bring it back into the project and not lose any of the quality that we put in there and then save it and it'll come into your project panel and you can replace the original clip with your pre-rendered clip and it'll play pretty much in real time so that's how you can use neat video to take an appallingly bad clip and turn it into a simply super clip with very little work I hope you found this useful my name's Andrew Davis. Thank you for watching.